Every magic item location in Baldur's Gate 3, Act 2. To the northwest part of the map, near where you come in, you can find a campsite which has some poplar. Follow those tracks over the ledge and you'll find a burrow. Inside you'll find the family ring which gives you plus two on your death saving throws. You can find Daman at the last light in. On top of being able to help Karlak, he carries a charge bound warhammer, the dark fire short bow, the harmonium halberd, the thorn blade, the thermodynamo axe, the sword of life stealing, the sword of clutching umba which is just a regular plus one sword which has a fancy move, and the sword master gloves. At the last light in, right beside Damon, you will find a strange ox if you did not kill it in Act 1. If you kill the strange ox now, on top of the shapeshifter's boon ring, you will also get the Hat of Fire Acuity. It's one of the premier items in Act 2, but it will walk you out of a quest line that you would get if you can leave the strange ox alive. At the last light in, near where you find Damon, you will find a rustic chest on the top floor which contains the rippling force mail. If you use this armor set with the heavy armor master feet, you're not going to be taking a lot of physical damage. If you head north to the last light in and then pass a perception check to examine this pile of rubble, you will find a dead flaming fist. They carry the shield of scorching reprisal which is fundamentally a plus 3 shield. And it also gives you fire resistance so hopefully it helps you out more than it did its previous owner. You can find Quartermaster Tally at the last light in right by the entrance. She carries 13 unique magic items. The incandescent staff, the defender of Great Axe, Barkskin Armor, Obsidian Laced Robe, Shade Clinger Armor, the Second Mighty Cloth, Wanty Scale Mail, the Cloak of Protection, the Shield of Devotion, Cinder Snap Gloves, Gloves of the Balanced Hands, Hat of Unlimited Kushigo, and the Amulet of the Harpers which lets you cast Shield. The third and final trader at the last light in is Mattis. He carries two magic items, the Cloak of Cutting Bruma, and the evasive shoes, which add plus one to your armor class, so pretty good boots. So I forgot to mention this when I was talking about Daman before. After you sorted out what he needs to do with Karlak, if you give him any additional infernal iron, he will be able to craft the flawed Helldusk armor for you. On the bottom floor of the last light end, under a bed, you'll find a hidden compartment. Inside this is the snowburst ring, which will create a floor of ice anytime you inflict cold damage on something. Most players will find their way to Isabel pretty naturally on their own. Now Marcus will try to kidnap her after you speak to her and he will drop the shifting corpus ring. Now you may also be tempted to try and kill Isabel for her loot. But if you try that, Marcus is just going to whisk away her body anyways and you'll have to fight a very long battle. Instead, wait until after the ambush and then knock her out. Looting her, you'll find the Moon Devotion robe and Janelle's gloves. Both of these are actually pretty good defensive items that pretty much everyone naturally misses out on. If you go to the area south of where you find the goblins, you'll find a chest and it's totally not guarded by an ambush. Inside you'll find the frost prints. You can find two magic items by heading to this particular dead end. The leader of the enemies here carries the Ironwood Club, which apparently is good for druids as it can buff your shillelagh. And inside the chest here is the Ring of Self-Immolation, which you can use to set yourself on fire. You can find a clearing which has some magical torches just south of the last night inn. These torches are enchanted to keep the darkness at bay, so if you do the illogical thing and destroy them, you'll be attacked by shadow dogs. The leader of which carries one of the best items for this area of the game. If you continue to head south of the last light end, you'll find this area right here has a treasure chest which contains the luminous gloves. This may very well be the best item in the game period, do not miss out on this. Whether you're following the main plot or just wandering around, you'll find yourself at the ruined battlefield. The best choice here for loot purposes is to fight the Drider and the goblins and take their stuff. The Drider will drop Cruel Sting and the Moon Lantern. Once you get the Moon Lantern, I recommend freeing the Pixie, that way you get the benefits of the Moon Lantern without having to carry it around. On this half orc side with the goblins, you'll find the Thermal Arcana Gloves, and nearby in a chest, you'll also find an amulet that lets you cast Fog Cloud. So this one's extremely well hidden. In this little area right here, behind the vases, you'll find a traveler's chest. Inside it is the Ring of Twilight. If you continue down south, you'll find a second Dark Justicier mask. And south of that is the Gloom Strand Shield, which you'll find in a chest. Once you have a way to deal with the Shadow Curse, you can head to the shack to the east of the Last Light Inn. Inside a chest in the shack, you'll find the Prenumbral Armor. From here, head on down into the basement. On one of the enemies that ambush you, you'll find a covert cow. And in this heavy chest right here, you'll find one of the best rings for spellcaster in the entire game. On the top floor of the toll house, you will find the greediest boss in this game. 
This boss drops the Twist of Fortune, which is potentially one of the strongest weapons in the game. This weapon has a special attack that does more damage to an enemy that has a lot of gold. Now, PC users can exploit this in order to reverse pickpocket money into a foe that they don't particularly like, and then hit them very, very hard. However, unfortunately, console users do not have a button that allows us to reverse pickpocket enemies. Is what I originally said, but as of 2.16.24, aka the very day I put this out on a short, this was changed and now consoles can actually reverse pickpocket. So enjoy having the best weapon in the game, console players. After dealing with the boss, there are three unique magic items that you can get at the dollhouse. You can find the gloves of Battle Mage's power in the chest right here. From the roof, you can break some boards to jump down to the second floor to reach a chest that contains a necklace with a name great for a cat. And on an easier to reach area on the second floor, you'll find a chest that contains the Iron Vine Shield. You can find a hidden hatch in the Mason's Guild, which leads you to a pretty linear area. Once you fight your way to the end of this area, you will find a chest that contains the Helmet of Arcane Acuity. There are three magic items in the graveyard right by the Mason's Guild. In a sarcophagus here, you will find the Ice Bite Robe. Just south in another sarcophagus, you'll find the Boots of Apparent Death. And across from that, on a skeleton, you'll find the True Love's Caress, which is one half of a strong magic item combo. It won't work by itself, so you'll need to get both rings. If you head north from where you find the Ice Bite Robes, you'll find an ambush right by the water, the leader of which carries the closest thing that we have to a Javelin of Lightning, the Lightning Jabber. This weapon is one that is 100% meant to be thrown, and it's also the strongest throwing weapon that you'll get at this stage of the game. To the northeast, there is a secret entrance to the morgue. Inside this entrance, you'll find an acidic area, and at the bottom, you'll find a hollow armor who carries the protective plate. And in the chest above, in that same area, you'll find the Flesh Melter Cloak. Inside the morgue to the west, in a chest, you'll find the Eversight Ring. In a chest to the south, you'll find Bided Time. In a chest to the east, you'll find a strange Tendril Amulet. And right beside that, on a charred corpse, you'll find Furzu's Ring of Trading. And after traveling east so far on the ground, you'll come out west of the House of Healing. As you approach the exit area of Act 2, you'll run into a Githyanki ambush, the leader of which carries psionic ward armor and bracers which allow you to cast telekinesis. Between Moonrise and the Githyanki ambush, you can find a bar. In the area behind the barkeep, you can find the Punch Drunk Bastard and Icarus Gloves, both which can be found in chests. Additionally, right behind the bar itself, you will find the Rat Bat and a quest item found in these loose planks. Between the Moonrise and a House of Healing, you'll find a secret puzzle. After completing the puzzle and heading down, you'll find the Sharn Sanctuary. Passing three different skill checks will allow you to head deeper inside and you'll find the Ritual Dagger of Shar. You can give an offering of blood in order to get consumable loot, and you can take the Ritual Dagger afterwards. However, if you do take the dagger, you will be attacked, so be prepared for that. There's a quest that you can start near the starting area right by this section here. This nameless man is on a quest for revenge and he wants you to help find evidence. The evidence in question can be found under the loose floorboards right near where you find the rat bat. Bringing this evidence back to this nameless man will grant you the raven gloves. You can find two magic items on two skeletons on a ledge north of where you get ambushed by Githyanki. On these two skeletons, you'll find the assassin's short sword and the watcher's shield. In the middle of the house of healing, you'll find my favorite boss encounter in this game. I highly recommend stocking up on inspiration dice to pass those persuasion checks beforehand. Regardless of how you defeat this boss, your reward for doing so is going to be the most powerful amulet in this game if you use it correctly. The four nurses all have unique magic items, but they're kind of specific to the boss encounter, so I'm not actually going to count them. After the boss, there are three magic items that you can find within the House of Healing. You can find Shard's Temptation just sitting there in this random crate for no reason. On the west side of the house, beside some beds, you'll find a skeleton which carries the ring, True Love's Embrace. When you use these two rings, the effect will last even after you take them off, so they're only just good prep items. And to the very north on the ground floor in a chest, you will find the Poisoner's Gloves. This next magic item is going to require you to do an entire quest line. Start at the last light in and then talk to the Flaming Fist who is comatose. Steal a loot from a surgeon, use that loot to wake him up, tell Halsen that his buddy's awake, bring Halsen to his buddy, then defend the portal that Halsen goes into from a few enemies. Save the boy but not really. And then, and I'm not joking, this is actually the important part, beat this kid at hide and seek. 
If you manage to beat Oliver at hide and seek without actually starting a fight, you will get the Ring of Shadows. In a chest right beside him, you will find the Ring of Mental Inhibition. You can find Lantarv at Moonrise and he will sell six magic items. He sells the Halberd of Vigilance, the Slicing Short Sword, Fistbreaker Helm, Enraging Heart Garb, the Gloves of the Duelist, and the Sentinel Shield. But wait, there's more. If you figure out the Disciple Zarel's secrets through persuasion, she will allow you to purchase items from her secret stash. This unlocks four more magic items. The Render of Mind and Body, the Dwarven Split Mail, the Gauntlets of Surging Accuracy, and Bigby's Chew Toy. You can find Roa Moonglow once again in Moonrise. This time she carries the Drake Throat Glaive, the Nair Misser, Armor of Devotion, Sharpened Snare Curus, the Gloves of Crushing, the Ring of Spiteful Thunder, the Poisoner's Ring, and any loot that you didn't buy in Act 1. You can find a second Moon Lantern on the second floor of Moonrise in Balthazar's room. Right beside that in a chest, you will find the Derivation Cloak. But wait, there's a secret. If you put a heart in this altar, you can open a secret passage and find a chest containing the Cold Brim Hat. But wait, there's an even more secret secret in this room. If you interact with this ritual circle as Gale, you will get a special interaction. This will give you the option of defying Bistra in order to craft the Shadow Lantern. It gives you a level 6 summon that is really good in Act 2, so I would recommend doing it. On the second floor in Catherick's bedroom, you will find the Cloak of Elemental Absorption in a chest. Right next door in his daughter's bedroom in the chest, you will find the Spine Shutter Amulet. If you're like me, and I'm sure all of you are, you don't like Astarian very much. Well, now you can rejoice because we will be making use of him and he is not going to like it. After you buy the Hat of Storm Science Power, the Robe of Exquisite Focus, the Thunderskin Cloak, the Risky Ring, the Circlet of Hunting, the Ring of Free Action, and the Boots of Arcane Bolstering, this crazy lady wants to have her blood sucked out of her body. If we convince Asterion to do so, she will give us a potion that will increase our strength permanently by plus two. Now Astarian is not going to like us very much after that, but I'm sure nobody will ever care about that. In the basement of Moonrise in the prison, you can find the Warden who carries the best amulet for wizards, the Spellcrest Amulet. Right above her in a chest, you can find the Browbeaten Circlet, and lying around, we'll find Wolverine's Hammer. But let's be honest, he does need it more than we do. After saving the prisoners in Moonrise, you can go talk to Elfira and you will see a heartwarming reunion. After this, she will give you the potent robe, which is an amazing shirt for any charisma caster. Of course, Elfira does need to be alive to give you this reward, so keep that in mind. You'll find the entrance to the Gauntlet of Shard through the Grand Mausoleum to the north. Inside the mausoleum and the chest to the east, you will find the Vivacious Cloak. You know how sometimes you come across a boss and you're like, oh, I'm not ready for this just yet, I better wait until later? Balthazar is not that kind of boss. There is no reason not to fight him immediately as it's the easier of the two fights that you have available. So kill it with fire, kill it now, and when you do, you will get the Circlet of Bones. Also, right beside where you find Balthazar, there is a vault which contains three chests. There's only one magic item inside, but it's a pretty good one, so I would recommend getting Astarian to pick this lock. If you go to the room immediately to the east of where you can teleport with the Garden of Shar, you will find a chest that contains the blow the least expected. To the northeast of the Gauntlet of Shar, you will find an unmissable encounter. It's unmissable because you're going to need to get this Umbral Gem, which is located right beside the Displacer Beast. But the better loot here is the Hellfire Hand Crossbow, which you get from the boss. Now, it's easy to take what you need and go, but there's actually two other magic items nearby. You can find the Darkest Thessier Gauntlets on a crate right here, and if you continue to head a little bit to the north, you will find a heavy chest that contains the Boots of Brilliance. You can find a very powerful but also easy to miss ring in the same self trial. Here you'll fight evil clones of yourself, and the evil clone of Val will drop the killer's sweetheart. Pairing this with the Surgeon's Subjugation Amulet is the strongest combo of two magic items that I am aware of. At the end of the Soft Step trial in the Gauntlet of Shar, you'll find the Spear of Night. But also pay attention to your surroundings because on top of there being the Dark Justice Year helmet in the chest here, you will also find the Dark Justice Year half plate in front of the Spear of Night. 
If you want this magic item, you're going to have to be extremely mean to rats. Accept no offers for peace, and they will ambush you in this spot here. Even if you're extremely smart about this fight, the sheer number of rats is going to mean the fight takes a little bit. Once you kill all the rats, the final rat will turn into a human who carries the Justice Year's scimitar and the Justice Year's great shield. Once you make your way through the Gauntlet of Shar, Shadowheart is going to have to make a final decision between good and evil. One way or another, you are going to lose the Spear of Night through this encounter and gain a new spear. If Shadowheart chooses the good option, you will gain the probably better of the two options, the Moonlight Glaive. Otherwise, you will get the Shar Spear of Evening instead. There's no way to get both of these weapons, and your choice will have a heavy impact on the rest of your playthrough. Once you've freed or slain the Night Song, the final confrontation with Ketherick is unavoidable. This will likely lead to a giant battle with his minions, and there's a lot of loot to be had. Disciple Zarel will be carrying the Absolute's Protector, and the Orc Mig will be carrying the Argument Solver. And on your way up the stairs, one of the enemies will be carrying the Merculite Scourge. Now, you may be inclined to pursue Ketherick as soon as you beat his first phase. However, if you're too hasty, you'll miss out on the Ring of Exalted Marrow, which you can find in a chest right where Ketherick started from. Additionally, this will be the first time that you can actually have Jotunheera join your party and you can gain the Sylvan Scimitar from her if you have not already. Regardless if you have Jahira join your party for the final battle or not, make sure that you bring Will for the final encounters. Next, follow the quest marker in order to go save Zariel's asset. Doing so will trigger a conversation with Mazora. During the conversation, if you have Will in your party, you will have the option to make a persuasion check to get additional loot. The reward you get is the Infernal Rapier, which is one of the best weapons in this game, especially for Will. You can find a fairly complex puzzle to the far southeast of the Mind Flayer colony. Completing this puzzle will open a door and you'll find a skeleton which carries the circlet of mental anguish and brain drain gloves. And right beside that skeleton, you will find the Blade of Oppressed Souls. Excluding buffs, this is the final magic item that you can get before Ketherick, so go on ahead knowing that you're not going to miss out on anything else. Regardless of any decisions that you might make, Ketherick will be the final boss of Act 2. He will be carrying Ketherick's Warhammer, the Reaper's Embrace, and Ketherick's Shield, which is actually really good on Gale because he's a human, he can carry shields. If you saved her previously, after the final battle, you can talk to Dame Aelin at the end of Act 2. This will send her to your camp, and at the end of her long rest, she will talk to Shadowheart. At the end of the conversation, she will give her the Salunite Spear of Night. Thank you all for watching. Comment below if I've missed any magic items, and don't forget to like and subscribe.